This is the 26th of May, and this day in Baptist history, we're reading This Poor Man Prayed. We're going to read in the scriptures Psalm 34, verses 3 through 8. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and he saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Someone has well said, stated that God has three ways of answering our prayers. Sometimes he says yes. At other times he responds with a no, and yet at other times he answers with an earth-shattering silence. It is easy for us to joyously receive his affirmative answer. In the knowledge of his omniscience, we soon learn that it is for our own advantage when he responds negatively. But when his answer postpones our wishes, we often go about our tasks and in time almost forget our petition. We should learn the lesson that God always answers our prayers, and when he postpones the answer, he does not forget. The importance of being faithful in prayer has come to mind with regard to the need for us to continue instant in prayer for our missionaries. God's silence must not be equated with refusal. Our omniscient God delights in answering the prayers of his children. It is he who has instructed us to enter his presence boldly with our petitions. In his eternal wisdom, our Heavenly Father works his will more perfectly than our human finite minds can comprehend. Our petitions are never ignored, and we need to be alert to his abundant answers. God's penman reminds us that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask or think. In other words, Often when we pray and it seems that heaven is brass, God is answering our requests in ways that are superior to what we have asked. A case in point is found in the life of Adoniram Judson, the father of missions among modern day Baptists in America. Many would have despaired after the experience of this man of God. He had arrived in Rangoon on July 13, 1813, but on June 8, 1824, he had been arrested and imprisoned by the Bur Burmese government. Two years later, on May 26, 1826, Ann Judson wrote a lengthy, heart-rending letter to her brother-in-law, Dr. Judson, relating the details of the inhuman suffering that Adoniram had endured during his imprisonment. Some might conclude that God had forgotten his servant. Many would have concluded that the prayers of the saints for God's servants had been forgotten, but such was not the case. God's ways are not always our ways, and he is quietly planning for his own in love. So it was in the life of Dr. Judson, even in the darkest days of disappointment. But let another illustration from the life of that dear man of God prove our point, and I quote, Dr. Judson became intensely interested in behalf of the Jews while he was laboring among the heathen in, of India. He not only prayed earnestly for their conversion, but awakened an interest in others also. So they raised $1,000 toward a mission to Palestine, which he urged the pa Baptist Missionary Union to establish. But to his re great regret, the enterprise was not undertaken. Were his prayers then left unanswered? Let the facts speak. Many years subsequent, indeed only to a, a fortnight before his death, Mrs. Judson read to him from Reverend Dr. Haig's Journal of Travels in the East. This is this extract, and I quote, There, at Mr. Goodell's house in Constantinople, we first learned the interesting fact, which was mentioned by Dr. Schaffler, that a tract had been published in Germany giving some account of Dr. Judson's labors in Ava. They had fallen into the hands of some Jews, and had been the means of their conversion, that it had reached uh, Trespazond, a Grecian state where a Jew had translated it for the Jews of that place, that it had wakened a deep interest among them, 
that a candid spirit of inquiry had been manifested and that a request had been made for a missionary to be sent to them from Constantinople, end of quote. Mrs. Judson adds, and I quote, his eyes were filled with tears when I had done reading, but still he at first spoke playfully and in a way that a little disappointed me. Then a look of almost unearthly solemnity came over him and clinging fast to my hand as though to assure himself of being really in the world, he said, love, this frightens me. I do not know what to make of it. What? Why? What have you been just reading? I never was deeply interested in any object. I never prayed sincerely and earnestly for anything, but it came. At some time, no matter at how distant a day, somehow in some shape, probably the last I should have desired, it came. And yet I've had little, so little faith. May God forgive me. And while he condescends to use me as his instrument, wipe the sin of unbelief from my heart. End of quote. As we uphold our, in our intercessory prayers the work of our missionaries who labor around the world, let us, now grow, let us not grow weary. With importunity, let us enter the throne room of God. And as we pray, let us also watch for the amazing answers which our Lord provides. In one of the stanzas of his poem entitled Prayer, Philip B. Strong wrote, I prayed, the answer long deferred, brought not the thing I sought, he answered better than my plea, I better than my thought. To God be the glory.